bad guy, don't so come say hi to the bad guy, don't so come say hi to the bad guy, don't so come say hi to the bad guy. Don't. Say hello to the bad guy. Tax season. KJM PLLC. KJM PLLC. PLLC. Yeah, that's yeah. my firm. Yeah, that's um Kenneth Montgomery's um Instagram. Go through there, check it. You drop a lot of knowledge. And, and I, I'm not trying to front, man. We we black men. We we at, we at one point, you know, we we forgot our purpose here. Like we cool with lying and bullshitting and mm. saying things that don't matter. And and um, at some point, I, I I gotta give some context to what's going on. Things are happening in those courtrooms that our people have no idea how to deal. They have no idea, tax. The federal system, they have no idea what it's about. Mm-hmm. The state system, they have no idea. Do you feel that the judicial system is like is a is a is basically a, a, a new form of slavery? Do Absolutely. You- it, it, it's um it's a vehicle to slavery. Um you gotta think in this country, you know, and I'll be very frank, uh, you know, I don't not to offend anyone. We can talk fact. But America was always a white nationalistic experiment. Mm-hmm. If you do the history of black people, you do the history of Africa, you do the history of Europe, you do the history of white people, you do the history of America. It was founded as a white nationalistic experiment. Um, black people were the cogs of uh, industrialism and capitalism in this country. Mm-hmm. And when we got here. Uh, we were used as such. We were property. Um, one of the most surreal experiences ever in my life is being in law school and literally debating my humanity with my classmates about in constitutional law about being three-fifths of a person. And this system, this Anglo-Saxon system, this American jurist, white Anglo-Saxon jurisprudence was based upon excluding us at every level. And when the laws were made. It excluded us when they changed the laws. Even you got to think there's there's such things as Jim Crow, de facto segregation. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've been blackballed out of we right down here on Wall Street tomorrow morning. If we were flies on a wall and we went up on the top floor of all these Fortune 500 McGraw Hill, all these financial institutions, there's no one uh, who we would feel represent the people where we came from yeah. we're, we're, we're not here we've pretty much been blackballed out of where the money is at mm-hmm. and you know when you look at the legal system the legal system was the sergeant at arms to make sure the status quo remained the same and it's still doing that yeah you feel that they make laws for black people like if there's a certain thing like you know like let's say crack for instance the mm-hmm. way people were getting way more time for crack than they would get for cocaine a drug that was used more in the white community categorically and unequivocally without a doubt when you look at you got to look at um when people ought to understand how these laws are originated the federal sentencing commission the people who get together and decide uh the death penalty the sentencing guidelines the crack cocaine problem the, the sentencing guidelines, all those people go to the same Ivy League schools. They hang out. They vacation together. They do all the things that they think are good for their social and, and their, their culture. Mm-hmm. They all have the same way of thinking. All those people created the Listen, when you, how can you create something that's more punishment? For you to have crack cocaine... What you got to got? What you got to have? <laughs> got to have some coke, right? Got to have some cocaine. <laughs> so, logically speaking, if coke, you you can't have crack without coke, how could you come up with an idea to say those who have crack should be punished more? A yeah. hundred to one more. To this day, even in post-racial, you got your symbolic black president, your symbolic uh, black uh, uh, Eric Hold, um, Holder. Mm-hmm. Um, you have you have these guys, and it's still not one to one. It's still a different ratio, and that was made for us. I think deep down in American society, um, white people have a fear of black people for whatever that fear originates from. You can go through and read the history books and what's been going on. But as a result of that, we've had these communities that have been created out of fear because they wanted to be away from us, but they were intrigued by us too, because Mm -hmm. they didn't want to live next to us, but they damn sure come down and bring their woman to the cotton club. 
and check how we move. I always said, I'm like, somebody had to be ext- extremely afraid of something yeah. for them to want to just keep this demographic or this group of people away from everything. 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 You know what I mean? Like, everything. let's keep them unknowledgeable. Let's, let's undereducate them. Let's create laws to keep them in prison. Like, to the point where we, you know, we, I feel like me and you both are products. I'm, I'm a little, I'm older than you, I think, 43. Um, I grew up on black music and I really grew up on hip hop. Mm-hmm. You look at hip hop, it's, um, it's like the, it's almost like the drug game where you have the white guys who have all the distribution channels mm-hmm. and you got these guys who may represent us selling whatever our culture may be. And a lot of them are selling stuff that they don't even participate or partake in themselves, but they're doing it because it's a check. It's a check. So it's like, and our kids, you know, they're telling our kids to pop them zannies and do this and do that and, and bust this and do that. And they send their kids to um, private school mm-hmm. with the heads of Goldman and all this other stuff. So our culture, even, we've been dehumanized to the point where they sell our culture and we can't say they because we got cats on our on and from our community who with it because yeah. they're like yo I'm a capitalist man we gotta get somebody gotta do it how many times you heard that you know growing up mm-hmm. with the hustling somebody's like yo I, well if they don't somebody gonna do it yep. and and that's where we at <laughs> I don't sell his mama crack somebody, somebody gonna, gonna sell, sell his mama crack yeah and I and I got I done seen homeboys fall out and kill each other because somebody sold crack to somebody moms or somebody moms did a sexual favor for drugs for somebody yeah. for that drug and communities have been fractured forever because of that yeah. and we caught up in that 